that's the best I can do. If you have not become a patron of the Geocache Talk Network, what are you waiting for? Patron levels start as low as a bison tube level at $3 a month. To sign up is easy. Simply go to the Geocache Talk website and click on the Become a Patron button or go to patreon.com forward slash geocache talk. Patrons now get the famous blackout coin, invites to special events, and other really great items throughout the year. Become a patron today. Have you subscribed to FTF Magazine yet? FTF Magazine is the number one geocaching magazine available. It is a quarterly magazine that you can be part of. Submit your geocaching milestones and adventures to be published. FTF Magazine is also interactive with puzzles to solve and the hunt to find Spartacus. If you can solve the puzzle or find Spartacus, then you will be entered in to win a special path tag. Every new subscription, you will receive a special swag pack. Subscribing is easy. Just visit FTF's website, ftfgeo.com. Don't miss out and subscribe today. Hey everyone, time for Puzzle Talk, the geocaching puzzle podcast brought to you by the Geocache Talk Network. And here are your hosts, Charles Watkins and Tom Brotherman. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. All right. It's going to be a fun night. Good morning. This is gonna be a hey, very fun night. <laughs> yeah, we're we're I wouldn't say charting into uncharted ground, but it's sort of an area that is a little bit fuzzy. But we're working on that. I'm not and gonna lie. Like to... <laughs> I have never before on my own ever right. solved a puzzle cache. That is what we're talking about tonight. Now well, I have good. I have gotten the final coordinates. Right. But never myself have I solved one of these on my own. So it is a good learning experience for me doing the research on it um, and finding some of these caches, cache pages mm -hmm. that are still out there. So um it is 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 interesting. <laughs> Jeff, technically is fun and ridiculously vague. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you, Aussies. There we got we got probably several Aussies on tonight. I know we got Darren and Kim are here, so thank you, thank you. Hope things are going hey, well. So for all of you, for all of you guys that Semmel from okay. the Little Apple. Symbol from the Little Apple, which if people don't know, that's Manhattan, Kansas. Um, Go ahead. For those of you who who did daylight savings and and changed your clocks this last weekend, you know, because we don't do that in Arizona. That's um, right, we did. What a mess. Are, are you guys acclimating to it and, and adjusting to, <sighs> to all of this stuff now? Uh. Oh. <laughs> That's what said. There you go. There's your answer. I had to see myself for a moment. I hated it. He you had to you had to excuse yourself from the room for a moment. Can you catch? Oh, we've got a lot from down under. Thank you. We 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 love you guys down there and guys and gals. In the other part of the world, it's coming up to summer out there. Summertime, some, some, summertime, 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 some, some, summertime. Okay, enough of that. Um, let's let's do some news. What do you say? Sorry, I cut you off a little bit. You're all right. All I'm right. Much longer because I'm still eating. You keep eating. Um, Charles, take or you take the first one. If you would, sir. 
All right, so limited Puzzle Talk merch is available. Uh, our first version of our only version of our coin is in single digit quantities on the store. And so if you want one, you better grab it while it's there. Um, that's not what I meant. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I was trying there. That's what I was trying to do. Oh, thank you, sir. You it's go. been a while since I've done that. I understand. Oh, oh man, the technical difficulties are real tonight. Fun today. All Have right. Today. So you people are getting what you're paying for tonight. <laughs> hey, some of them are paying something, so you need to get with, well, the, that's true. Get with the program. And I'm, and I'm one of them. Uh, all, right, all right, so go to geocachetalk.com and click on the store tab at the top, or you can go directly to the store at chromiaprint.com slash collections slash geocaching. Hop on over there, grab you um, one of the limited coins that are left um and once the coins are gone um that's it shirts are gonna go as well so make sure yeah. that if you want one of our first run shirts that you jump in on that and get one printed and sent your direction absolutely that is um we have we have plans for something in the plans in the future but we're not there yet, so there will probably be a little bit of a transition point. So we're kind of in that point now. We're not we're not buying any more of the original set. So if you'd like any of those to complete, um, you know, this is the chance. We're uh, I've got a few puzzles, talks, coins left, but not many. So anyway, yep. So they're not many. Anyway, there's you go. And we might, we'll probably do another shirt regardless of the coin. We'll probably be another shirt. Don't you think right. at some but point? But yeah. it'll be a different design. Different design. Yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was a hint he gave when he said first edition. That's right. Uh, now listen closely to the hints here. <laughs> uh, seven summits of the world still going on. I think we're up to Kilimanjaro. Am I, am I correct? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're at Kilimanjaro this week. You this are month. correct. This month. Kilimanjaro, base camp, and the summit. Every one of them, you get. A, if you get part of the way, you get a base camp icon or souvenir, and if you get all the way to the top, you get a, a summit souvenir. So there you go. Or do you got to get fifty-eight ninety-five? Okay, that's doable. Yeah, okay. have, he's checking it. <laughs> I have not got off the ground yet for this for this one. Yeah, not a single yeah. cash yet this month. Nope. Everest is going to be that's the the obviously the tallest in the world, so it's going to have the most points. So, but uh, th Thanksgiving's uh, coming up here, and I'm going to be off for a week, so I can. Ooh. There you I go. will definitely take care of it then. It will not be a problem. Nice. Yeah, we've got a, a Motley Caching Crew day set for a week from Saturday. We're going back out, our group. So I'll kick it out that day e easily. Uh, next is the November 23rd will be a patron party. And we will play a November 23rd. Did I get that right? Yeah. Yeah. Because next, yeah, we got Puzzle Talk next Tuesday. So two weeks from tonight will be a patron party. We'll play a Jackbox game. The, the beauty of playing the Jackbox games is that the audience can participate. So all patrons are able to participate in that Uh which is a lot of fun. We have a good time with that. And then the other item is we have a new path tag project, the GTN path tag project, which includes the patrons as well, because we like to include them in things patrons, because you get cool stuff if you're a patron, but that's for some, that's for the beginning of the show. Patrons of the geocache talk network are going to select the next GTN path tag. Everyone 
in the whole world can participate by sending in your path tag artwork to geocachetalk at gmail.com and add the hashtag GTN path tag project and submit your entries before between now and the podcast of hope, which is December 5th. Patrons will then vote on the entries and they'll pick a winner. The winning entry will receive a hundred free path tags of that design. How about that? That's, cool. That's a sweet deal. A hundred free. And it'd be your design. So, I mean, it's even better, right? <laughs> You're the one that picked it. You, if you win. So get your artwork submitted. We've had a couple submitted. Not bad. Not bad. Got some, you know, got some competition out there. If you're going to bring one, so if you're going to bring it, you better bring it because so far we've gotten a cool couple cool ones. So, uh, but Hey, anybody can participate. It's fun. Even if you're, you know, if you don't win, it's still fun. We'll probably show everybody's, you know, as long as they're, you know, <laughs> they're, uh, PG at least appropriate. Uh, Appropriate kid friendly is what it needs to be. We're not doing anything crazy. Um, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, so they'll be picked. So you want to get your artwork. Uh, hopefully if you help us out, if you make it into put the artwork in an actual, and you go down to pathtags.com, you can download the generic blank. Yeah. So you can, you can do it that way. That, that kind of helps us. So, um, all right. I think that's it. Did yes. I cover everything? We did. Uh, tonight, steganography. And yes, I said it correctly. Steganography. Yes, you I did. It, I said it once, correct. That's all I need. Just once on the record. Steganography. Right. Steganography, by the way, has been around for a very long time, which I did not know until I was preparing with you guys for the show, but People have been hiding stuff in pictures and all that for before before the internet, before computers. So there you go. Coming yes. prepping for tonight's show, I thought there was only one way to do this Wonderful. stuff. Wonderful. Only one submission per person. Thank you, Pizza Ninja. He's on top of that. That's my mistake. I'm going to add that to the notes because I always forget that part. Go ahead. Sorry, can, Tom. Well, hold on. What about my sock puppet? Can it, did it can it submit one too? Ooh, no. No. Not in this game. <laughs> Maybe Dang in geocaching, it. but not this game. Dang it. Dang it. So Dang coming here. into this, I thought there was only one way to do steganography. And as I look at some of the examples that y'all gave and read the definition, it's like well, hold on a minute. I have done some other stuff that I didn't know was that. But we'll get into all, a lot of the different kinds and yeah, talk about maybe why some of them are more popular than others. Or mm -hmm. Although none of them seem to be extremely popular. No, I'm surprised a little bit right. that we don't see them that often, maybe. I don't know. As Jeff said earlier, he's like they're a little bit. It's a little bit vague. Um, I've put some tools out there. Um, Jeff's site uh, has probably the most tools of the bunch, um, but there are other sites. I mean, uh, we're, we're and we're they're going to be they'll be in the show notes as well. But um, one of them that I use just for testing, which I can, I can show the test if you want to do that. But yeah, tools, tools dot cash the line dot net. Je uh, Jeff has compiled a pretty sizable lit or chunk of tools that you can go to. Um, but anyway, there you go. Yeah, and so in the show notes, there's there's several um, online sources that we have for um, 
tools. There's a, a mobile fish, um, a geocaching mystery toolbox, uh, online steganographic stick. Yeah, that one decoder. <laughs> um, a steganography online tool um, that will help you. And in there, I put a link to a Reddit thread. In this Reddit thread, it's a Reddit thread about geocaching, right? So, but it 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 talks about steganography, um, and the second person who, uh, or the first person who commented a reply to this, puts a lot of really good tools and hints, and is a really good write up. Oh, cool. so it is worth it if you to have no idea what this is to right. look at that Reddit thread. But the Reddit thread comes with a word of caution. If you go down the rabbit hole that is the <laughs> geocaching threads on Reddit, yes, you can end up on the wrong side of the rabbit hole, right? Reddit. Yes. Venture at your own risk. This one thread though the second post in it is very informative and is very good and is worth the time for you to go and read it. Right. Even though it's, it's, it's an older thread um, and whatnot. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's 10 months old. Um, it's probably the most recent thing about steganography and geocaching that's real, that's on there. Yeah. So, um, Read it, but word of caution: don't d d stay on stay on target when you go into right. the world of Reddit and and especially the geocaching Reddit because it twists and turns down in there. So fair warning has been given to you. Uh, what you do with that is is on your own um, from there. So um, what there's the also. What Another plug? section Thank down here in the notes um, that is that I have um, that is what is steganography? Well, the last we'll rearrange the notes and I'll put all of the tools in in yeah. one area. But there's no one problem. that is a really good web page mm -hmm. um, that tells you it's a GaryKessler.net slash library web page. And it is very good at telling you how to hide data inside an image um, and whatnot. So oh, uh, clever. It, it is it is really well written. Um, and for somebody who had absolutely no idea what I was looking at when I we decided we we're going to do this topic. Yeah. Um, it, it helped me kind of understand oh, this is how you do this. So um, on the flip side, it helps you now go back and look at some of those caches where the only thing on the cache page was an image and say, oh, I'm going to try this and and see what happens with it. So oh, I spelled something wrong. I was trying to pull up uh, Pizza Ninjas to take a look at. I misspelled something. One thing, too, that we, we do want to point out is that uh, – I didn't know. I didn't think about this, but steganography in a is in a is a general term for hiding things within plain sight. So uh, we've got a couple examples in the show notes where you could technically audio. If you hide something in an audio MIDI or whatever, if there's something hidden in there, that's a steganography thing that just this happened so steganography is not just hiding stuff you know within the pixels of a, of a foot yeah so audio um there's a couple different uh, so like charles said at the beginning there's not a a lot out there obviously you know like you know charles and tom of do puzzles all the time and if they're have a limited Tom's when he he's got some that we're going to talk about tonight, but still it's something that I think my hope is that 
people will come away from this show going, Ooh, I can do this. I can create. Cause that's, that's the goal. That's one of our goals of puzzle talk is not only to help you look at what's out there with that, 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 that puzzle cache that's down the road that is still stuck there. Cause you don't know what to do with it because you've done everything around it and you just don't know what to do with that. That's one goal of puzzle talk is help you navigate that one. But also we want you to go down the road from that one and put your own out. So hopefully tonight you'll take that information that we're going to give tonight and you're able to go, okay, I understand it better now. I think I can do this and I think I can create a create one on our own too. For the, the others to enjoy <laughs> to ponder over yeah uh, um so i got this one that pizza ninja put in the deal we'll pull it up here in a little bit because his is one of the off ones that you don't see very often because it involves a uh, audio file so i love that put that in the show notes too or did you already do that? Nope. Oh, it's it's going. I'll get it there. I got it. <laughs> well, I'll do a better version of it. Uh, yep. So, wh- wh- where do you want to head first? You want to? Is there some particular ones, Tom, that you want to look at first, or? No, I was actually going through my GSAC to look for one that that I got forgot to put in there because it was like one of your examples. Oh, very cool. And uh, I can't find a darn thing. That's okay. I will find it, though. I will. While y'all are doing that, let me show a real quick, just so, because people, uh, Steganography 101, let's do that real quick, just so you can see what I'm talking about. And then from there, we'll talk about different ones. But I want people to to not, we don't want to lose people too early and go, ah, you're, you've lost me. So let's start with, um, yeah, he's like, will your, will your example be solving the puzzle with the tools sites you're talking about? Well, we're not really going to solve any, we don't solve puzzles on puzzle talk, but we will give you the tools that will help you hopefully go out and solve your puzzles that you want to do or create your own but we don't solve puzzles. That's not our, you can go to, I think I'm sure there's Facebook groups that do that somewhere, but that's not us. Um, all right. So to begin with, I'm going to use one called, it's called beauty converter. And I'm going to put that in the chat room. It's also in the show notes, but just for that long. Beautifyconverter.com. And so I'm going to share my screen and bring this up. So here's what it looks like. It's an image steganography tool. So I'm going to pull a picture off my computer. So let me do that. Let me switch pages. Okay. So choose a file. That's what I've been playing with, but I'll bring it up. It's called, or the one I'm using is, isn't, uh, I used it for the photo for the picture here. Um, and I'm going to put in there. I'm going to put the, hey, everyone, it's time for Puzzle Talk. Put that in plain text here. I'll see in that. Yep. You can do a password. So if you want to make it a password on there to, you know, for whatever reason, let's make a password. We'll call it. That's oh, cool. So there's the photo. As you look at it, though, you can tell there's nothing. I mean, well, you might not be able to on your computer, but if you really look at it really carefully, you can't see anything. You can't. 
see the information that's in there. So then let me download it. Oh, I don't want to WinZip it. Hang on, I picked the wrong one. Oh, I lost it. Oh, well, let me go back. I killed my page. Let me let me share screen again. Uh, let me pull it up first and then we'll do it. There we go. So on that page, there's a decrypt as well. So I'm going to pull that up and I'll show you. So let me share my screen. So same website, except on this case, it's this, the decoder page. There we go. So you can then, from there, you can then choose the file. Mine was I called a hidden message. You do a decode, and there it says, the info hidden in the pic is, hey, everyone, it's time for Puzzle Talk, Geocache Puzzle Podcast brought to you by Geocache Talk Network. So that is the product Beautify Converter, and there's several. It's got different things you can do, HTML and IMGs and PDFs and all sorts of stuff. So, um, Darren brings up a good point which we talked about before the show. <laughs> I published a puzzle cache using steganography, but eventually it needed, had to change the puzzle because the GC website stripped out the hidden data. And that is something that we talked about a little bit before the show was, Hey, is, you know, I, because we, I haven't seen in most of the examples that you will see that have a image most of them are pre the geocaching website stripping the the metadata and whatnot off of the backside. So right. we had a discussion about, you know, can you still do these traditionally by hosting the image on your cache page? And our conclusion is we're not sure. Yeah. In, That's in his that, conclusion. What, My conclusion is, yes, you can. <laughs> you can. So, but... In that, what we did, and, and this is how we quickly tried to test this theory, the same image that Gary just showed you through the Beautify converter website that he created, he uploaded it to one of his cache pages. Yeah. Me yeah. and Tom then downloaded it off of the cache page and tried to find what the hidden message was in it using the known tool, the Beautify converter tool that... Um, that we know was used to encrypt it and yeah. we got nothing. So at some level, yeah, if you superficially, use, if you use anything that uses metadata, it's not going to work with the picture hosted on GC. Right. Yeah. So, um, a couple suggestions that have been go ahead. You know, so there you're, you're going to probably, if you, my thought on this is that, you will have to um, test it before you can get your um, cache page published um, and and make sure that it works for you um, and whatnot. Yeah, have a buddy test um, it. Right. Uh, but what, what Jeff just put here is that you're probably going to have to use an approved third image hosting site um, you know, mm -hmm. for some of this, depending on how it hides, um, how you, how the service that you're using hides the uh, encryption stuff in the image that you're trying to hide, if you're doing an image, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, that being said, most of the ones that we found that are an image type that are still active mm -hmm. are older puzzles that are pre ground speak stripping the data off of the off of the backsides of these images um and whatnot so uh just know going into this that 
if you want to make one like this, it will probably take a little bit of work and and testing to make sure that um, your puzzle is solvable. Yeah, I'm going to pull up as well. Um, and Brad's putting in some good ones too. Brad, that's actually correct. the first one that's in the show notes. Yeah, that's so that's the very it, cool. The one that's there in outside of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. That's the first one um, that we're going to look at. That's actually in the show notes. So yeah, um, good good job. So let's bring that one up. Yep. Why are you doing that? I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a different version of what we're talking about. So I think that'll also help people to think another. There's other ways to do this, by the way. Uh, and so I want people to think about that. The fact that, oh, you know, I w- we want to give everybody multiple ideas of what to do, multiple possibilities. This is one of them right now that we're talking about. And we're going to ask, we're going to talk about a couple others tonight as well. But I've got one also that I'm going to bring up that I think is completely different. So I'm doing that. Charles is going to bring up that other one. Share screen. Just got to find the right one. Um, This is actually the very first um, geocache that I came across when I was looking at steganography. Um, And it just so happened that it was at the top of the list because it has steganography in the um, cache title. So again, you can see that this one is from 2011. So um, is an older one, uh, but still solvable. I like this cache page because it, it walks you through a lot of how to solve these and thus gives you the tools on how to create one as well. Um, I obviously have no notes about it because I haven't solved it. Um, He does give you a little bit about the series, the series um, Mm -hmm. here by uh, E. Peter. So two is a series. um, I believe that's the series that's in Las Vegas outside of Las Vegas. That is now, most of those caches are archived except for the last one. Um, so, but it is a, an amazing series of caches. So um, we'll actually show you the archived one of this um, from where this Calgary group got the idea for this. Um, but they give you an example. They give you links to several places, um, give you some um, ideas Uh, on uh, a lot of this stuff uh, and give you some real world uses for this. You know, during World War Mm -hmm. II, um, the Japanese used this. Um, A lot of your uh, CIA and and covert units think that there was a lot of hidden data in uh, Osama bin Laden videos. So, some of this stuff has real world meaning right. um, and whatnot. So um, it's, it's kind of neat to see some of this stuff and, and how it really played out uh, in real world situations um, in the past. So right. um, it comes down and it gives you uh, a link about image properties. Um, and then it tells you, um, uh, it, it goes through color values through the RGB, the CMYK, and the HSB, um, right. and then web hosting numbers um, for certain colors. So um, this is a really good cache page write up um, and gives you plenty of examples. Um, this example he's got here, I hate it. Oh, do you like that? I, I hate it because 
it reminds me of the one no i was just looking for that the image is broken on it but it was an image just like this big green thing and the cash was called something like avocados are good too and it and i played with that thing for hours just in the, the different colors and the, you know the hues and all that stuff where i could barely make something out and finally figured it out and it took me a long time just to get to that point to figure it out to even do that right so and so i uh, go to a puzzle solving class you know this is back when i was extremely new and the guy the guy teaching it brought that cash up and i'm oh, like yeah, oh, i know how to do this it took yeah. me two hours and he did it in about 10 seconds just <laughs> open it and paint and use fill and it's like Oh, I, I said a few choice words. It's not a happy camera. <laughs> yeah. So uh, believe it or not, when I'm looking at this cache page on my second monitor, I can't note. I don't notice anything different in the green. Right. But when I look at it on the monitor that shows us showing it in StreamYard, I can see yeah. it clear as day. I can see it clear as day. Huh. Just the minute color difference. So I don't know if it's the angle of my monitor or what, but <laughs> right, it's it's there. So this one is one, um, and he shows you. Um, he tells you that this image contains a hidden message, and he's going to show you how on the cache page to decrypt it. And so right. um, you come down, and he tells you. Um, Oh you know, wow! He yeah. he walks you through how to how to un, undo this, right? Right, um, and so it's a really good um, web page that tells you um, good tutorial, huh? Oh, this, a, an this excellent part, tutorial. This excellent. part on this this last picture doesn't work anymore because that's one that used the metadata. Oh right. Right. Um, well, you'd have to do it differently. Like we said, you're going to have to. Could you still use that, though, guys, if you put the web, you, put that picture in Google like a Dropbox or somewhere like that? Yeah. Yeah. You'd be okay. Okay. Yeah, um, it's sad that so, they pulled that. But as Jeff um, said earlier, killed a lot of puzzles. Right. So. In this, um, it goes through and, and tells you, you know, how you can um, hide it using um, other things um, in how to hide this in the text. In one of the um, resources that we have in the show notes, um, we'll show you um, another way and traditionally I've always associated these with like prison movies and like trying to break out of prison right. where there are holes, where there are holes cut in a piece of paper and you overlay it over a message. Right. And then only the words that you can see through the holes are what you're supposed to read. Right. Um, so um, that, that is this pinpricks and a map used as an overlay um, for relevant letters in a message or you know, words in a, mm -hmm. you know, printed piece of paper. So it's, uh, you know, he gives you a lot of um, stuff in this um, to look at. And, and this cache is um, still an active cache. Um, right. You know, was found earlier this year, you know, about six months ago was the last time it was found. But the one thing that I like about this page in particular is that the write up on it is really phenomenal right. um, and gives you um, a lot of ways to hide stuff um, in different versions of steganography that, um, you know, we've talked about already. So right. it's um, a really good cache page. He gives you a link at the very top um, to the archived Puzzle Solving 101 cache series um, to a bookmark list. They're all archived now outside of Las Vegas. 
but the cache page is still up um, yeah. and whatnot. So whether the, the image stuff still works, the write up still there and yep. um, the tools are still there uh, and available for you as a cacher to go through this and create your um, right. one of your own steganography caches. That's very cool. Very cool. Uh, let me show real fast and then get back to a different one, but I'm going to show you real fast an old school version. If you, if you don't want to, for those out there that are like, I just want something simple. I want simple stenography, st stegono steganography. Sorry if I say it right. So here is the the horse and buggy version of steganography. So you got these two photos and it was a um, birdhouse, a locked birdhouse. And so uh, and it threw a lot of people off, right? Not steganography. Well, it actually is steganography. It's just old school steganography. So the court or the uh, the code for the for the for the lock is buried in this photo here so if you are to expand it if you notice i don't think you can see anything from from my perspective or your perspective you don't really see a whole lot but if you blow it up are y'all starting to see numbers yeah yeah, yeah. So, eight eight, 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 and a three. So again, old school steganography. You're hiding it uh, right there in plain sight. Plain sight. But you'd be surprised the way people were like, uh, "I don't know how to open the lock." Oh well, it, it's uh, you know, look at the clues for this uh, for this page right. and. <laughs> I mean, it's still, it's still clever. I mean, you know, at least I thought it was clever. I mean, people still had a problem with it, you know, and that's, you know, it made it, it made for a, a fun little puzzle. Might as well, you know, so that's, that's, that's literally the old school steganography is you just, you just take and take a photo and tweak it. Those can be fun too. But now we're into the high tech world. Back to the high tech world. Yeah. So um, the second one that we're going to look at is another active cache um, just outside of Austin that Tom throwed in the cache notes. I'll put it in the show bum, notes. Bum, 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 then, called oh, Gears. Gears. In, so. in the chat room for them to play along as well. So yeah, and for our audio listeners, that's GC14D6N. There you go. Now, this one may be busted because I thought I'm playing with it here. And because what you should so be you... Lo looking at there is not. Well, I opened up into JPEG, the, so that might be the problem. The puzzle's in the gears, right? In the in the puzzle one, P U Z. Right. It's it's in the yeah. So it's when it. you scroll down here and look, it's down here in the image gallery. Um, and so to um, do we know where to it's show you here? what that to show you what that image looks like. Mm -hmm. that's what the image looks like right and so um, this is what you get when you pull up the image out of the gallery so you have to download the image um, right and then use some form of a converter to get to data in the background but it looks like Tom was saying that. Uh, well, 
this one. I don't know that this works right anymore because this was actually a GIF, and you and you wouldn't you wouldn't see a change. <laughs> Nothing to see there, but you had to at look at it in a GIF editor, and then then you would see the different frames, and one of them had the coordinates in it. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. about that. So in theory, <laughs> this thing is flashing two different frames. One's up for like 30 seconds. The other one's up for like a microsecond or something. So you never see it. But if you use an editor, you can go in and you can break it down to the di two different frames and you can you can see the coordinates in the second one. Oh, wow. Again. Testing, testing, testing. Yes. It's going to be crucial for having one of these get published and work. No. Is that one still alive? Technically? It is still an active cache. It's active and it's got, it was it's found, found last month. Yeah, October 21st. Now, I'm always a little dubious of the TFTC. Did you really find it? Come on now. <laughs> If you saw how many plus ones I've I've logged <laughs> from the days of... <laughs> and I know you know what that plus one means. Yes, I do. So don't yeah. don't judge a don't judge a <laughs> don't book judge by a its log. Yeah, I guess you're right. But look back to the one where they found it in May. That one tells me that this thing still at least still worked then. Yeah, it might still be then. Uh Trisha brought up the point of Steganography, you had to cross your eyes until the info popped out uh, or your eyes popped out. Is <laughs> That's that's technically a steganography thing, the magic eye. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Uh, it falls in that cat in the general category of steganography where something's hidden within a photo or a or we're gonna we'll get to audio here in a little bit but so yeah those, Trish, those you're right. are easy those are super easy for me the wife's got a friend who can see those and so i just call her up and say hey what's say, this thing hey, say i can get it to work i'm sure yeah, somebody figured go, out a tool you do no that. no I, yeah. there are some online tools that'll do it but i've never had any yeah. luck with them I, I, I've actually solved a, a good number of the magic eye ones with the online tools. So I've done it the old school I, way with those, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. It be with my monitors that I have, it's very it's hard for me to You gotta kind um, of squint this right. Yeah. So all right, so here's the um the third active one that we have. Yeah. Um on our list tonight. Cause I think the rest of them are archived as long as Tom put them in the right place. Yep. Um, and this is the one that pizza ninja gave us earlier today. Um, so this one is a recent, recent hide compared to the others that we're looking at tonight. Um, it is in New York. I have no cash notes on it. Um, GC eight F a five Y. For our audio listeners, thanks, Gary. You bet. Um, which is funny because I've been to um, these been uh, everywhere, satellites man. that. Well, you know, I mean, I had to drive right past them when I <laughs> did some work in Albuquerque. So, um, did you make anyhow, he he gives you a link down here at the very bottom of the cache description to a audio file. Oh, and, cool. And he has and a checker. He, gives you, he, he does give you the caveat that, hey, download this file at your own risk. But as the cash owner, I am assuring you there's nothing nefarious going on. Trust yep. Pizza Ninja as far as you can throw his slice of pepperoni. Um, but oh. um, I think this is a, the caveat that all all cache pages should have um, on yeah. them that direct you to an outside source is that the uh, whatnot that the owner has verified that it is uh, legit. Let me pull up the other page because I have to share it with audio. 
share audio. Yeah. Well, and we'll just share the audio one time. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little janky. It's only it's only six seconds. So, um, let me know if you guys hear this. (laughs) Okay. If I got play. nothing. Yeah, it's not playing. I heard it on mine, okay. but not but not that one. Yeah, I heard it on mine a minute ago when I was testing it. So now <laughs> let me re let me see if I can pull it up differently. All right, let's try this again. Cool. Share with audio, which I think it defaults to that too, by the way, in, in StreamYard. Which is handy. <laughs> yep. All right, so there you go. Clever. There is some, there is some audio in there it, that you know off the top of your head it sounds like there's morse code in there it may not be but it's it you know mm, possible yeah i can see you'd have to possible. slow it down and, and do some stuff with it um yeah but it's it's definitely there i've also seen um j and la who are a caching team out of nebraska have yeah. one similar to this that she sent me at one point in time that is a r2d2 bunch of his whistles and buzzes oh, wow. and That'd be whatnot cool. and you have to try and decipher that so along the same lines as this um and it's a really cool cache i'll try and find it and throw it in the show notes um because it's along the same lines as this um in a really well done um, cache page, they had to do the same thing and host the audio somewhere else. Um, right. With a link to it. But there you go. Um, Something different. That's really cool. Ah, ah, ah. Did you? Yeah. You don't even need to listen to it. Well, that's now he tells good. me. Now he tells me. Maybe it's hidden somewhere else. Yeah. Hmm. The plot thickens. Oh well. Go guy. (laughs) I'm gonna go look at. I didn't even look at this, but I'm gonna go look at something else now. Yeah. Now you're like. Now you're racing around, going. Hmm. I'll come back to it after the show. But I, I got other things rolling around in my head now. So, um, so exactly. we're going to look at a couple of archived caches real quick. Um, yep. This is the um, Puzzle Solving uh, 101 uh, cache out of the Las Vegas area um, that has now been archived. Dun, 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 dun. Um, this is GC four A Z H P for our audio listeners. Um, so they uh, have archived it um, and whatnot. So, um, but as you come through and, and read it, he he gives you a list of Um, caches here that give you hidden information, lists, codes and ciphers, a basic cache page, and then codes and ciphers, advanced, images and steganography, which is what we're looking at currently, Uh, wordplay, mathematics, logic, and then has a final exam. The final exam for this series is still up and running. Oh, wow. Cool. Know that that cache you can still get to, um, and 
if you go and read that cache page, it tells you what you have to do for each of these um, to come up with final coordinates. Oh, wow. Um, cool. He, he does link to a toolbox, um, but it is my... Ah, and the toolkit, there's their toolkit that they have on this cache page is still up and running. So they're still maintaining um, the Bob and Brenda geocaching uh, website. And they have um, some tools um, that they have um, along with their disclaimer um, and whatnot. So, again, right. download these files at your own risk. And, and that's what we'll say about that. But in this archive cache, there is another list of tools provided by the cache owner that should help you with some of these tools, uh, some of these caches. Right. Bum, 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 bum. And so here's your, here's what we were talking about, about metadata, right? Um, mm -hmm. Whether it still applies or not. Um, animated GIF files. That's the one that Tom was just talking about. Um, yeah. Well, one thing I think people need to remember too, when you're doing these kind of things is know that <laughs> there's now a lot of tools out there. So depending on how you want to go about it, you need to kind of realize that you may not be as clever as, as you, cause like a photo, if you put a photo up and go, Oh, gee, I wonder what this photo is. Well, you can right click and go to, you can go to Google and say, where's this, located in the world it yeah. goes oh it's right here like oh dang i didn't know you could get that kind of info so right and so the, the other the other mm -hmm. side to that is that some of this stuff you know that they were doing in you know some of these cache pages that we looked at at 2007 2010 these you know people were sitting there looking at them like what are you talking about probably a little more common now um, then they, mm -hmm. some of these probably were, um, 10 years ago or, or 13 years ago in that, in the geocaching world. So, sure. um, this goes in to talk about, I, I enjoyed reading this part of this cache page because this is what Tom was talking about at the very beginning that if you alter your picture correctly, um, you look here, your the. Um, first two bytes of the file should be FF and D8, right. right? Which signifies that it's a JPG file. Um, and if you scroll to the last, to the end of the file, the last two digits should be FF and D9. And if they're oh. not, that means somebody has played with the picture ah. and done stuff. So by doing it this way, sounds right. like it doesn't, put it in the metadata, it actually alters the image. And what Tom was saying before the show when we were talking about this is correct if you did it this way. Right, Tom? Right. Yep. Cool. Still a cool uh, way to do it. You just need to know that you're going to have to host it a little bit differently, but still a cool way to do it. Right. So this is a really good walkthrough if you're wanting to try and create one of these. Um, mm -hmm. on on how to do some of this. Um, and it walks you through a lot of it and then a definition of what steganography is um, and, and whatnot. And, and it walks you through a lot of uh, how to create some of this stuff and the tools that they use to um, create it are linked in their toolbox. Um, right. So the GeoCheck um, is probably still good, though I don't know um, how you're going to be able to um, you know what what the puzzle is because the cache mm -hmm. has been archived and all of the picture links are dead on this. So you get these right. little weird missing html picture links so look at this and take it for what it is it is a good starting spot um, for people who 
um, this this cash page in the very first one that we showed tonight um, to help kind of walk you and guide you through how to create some of this. And then, um, you know, how to, you know, walk you through getting your own puzzle set up if if you're wanting to do um, one of those. So. Right. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, there's some about music. We've got those in the on the the show notes as well. Um, it's sort of similar to you know, it's it's a different kind of audio one that's available as well. So. Um, get there twice. I'll take that one out. Cool. Well, should we go to final thoughts? Well, I think it used to be, I think it used to be obviously a whole lot easier. Um, right. You could hide stuff in metadata. Yeah. Uh, there's other ways to do it still. Man. There's other ways to do it. One of them I have up there, I can, I can find the code in the in the image, but whatever I wrote my notes doesn't seem to work. So, um, I mean, I because I have one in the in the show notes where you can find the cipher at the end of the picture. Right. But I don't know. Something's weird going on. Huh. I'm trying to. Think. They got rid of metadata because that was something to do with privacy issues in Europe or something. Yeah. Uh, why can't you just strip your own metadata if you don't want your stuff out there? You're done with <laughs> that's, it. That's People not know. what the internet rules said. Yeah. We have to protect you from yourself. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. So, but but the basic idea that you can hide yeah. something right out in the open on, on yeah. the cache page, I mean that's kind of like basic geocaching anyway. When, you know when you when you could find a really good cache hide where the cache is right out in the open where everybody can see it, but only cachers know it's a cache container. Yep. So exactly. Oh, so this. There's still possibilities to do this stuff out there. Yep. Absolutely. Um, and we obviously have more data and, and references and materials located in our show notes for tonight's show than we showed in the show. Um, yes. We didn't go, you know, we briefly went over a couple of the um, tools and whatnot that we had. So just know that... Um, you know, we encourage you to go and look at the show notes. Um, yeah, it'll be up in a if, minute. If this is something that interests you, uh, please go look at the show notes. Um, and if somebody gets one of these new um, caches published, hey, send us a link to it. We'd be um, interested to see. Send us a link to puzzletalkpodcast at gmail.com. We would like to look at it and, mm -hmm. and see how you got around some of the metadata tweaks that um, geocaching.com has, has had to um, put in place um, and, and see if we can figure it out. And um, that will um, help other users who want to hide a similar cache like this. Uh, it kind of helps them because now they have a reference to go look at and, and you as a cash owner, they may be able to reach out and send you a message or reach out to us and say, Hey, so, you know, how did they do that? And, and we can let yep. them know. So um, part of this is giving you the tools and teaching you how to solve these puzzles in your area. But the other side to that is we want to give back to the community and give you the tools so that you can build some of these odd and rare puzzle caches and get mm -hmm. them published for your local community 
Um, so we, we highly encourage you, if you get one of these published, if you go through the steps to, to work on it and get it done, to send us a link, let us know, and, uh, you know, we'd, we'd like to take a look at it and, and see some of these. I'm going to work on one, and we'll see if I can get one published, you know, down here for my local community as well. Yep. Yeah, most definitely. I think it's a great uh, – I love them, and, and I love all of the different types of them. So – you know, think outside the box. Think of something, maybe do the old school version where you hide, you know, you hide numbers in a photo, but you can do it, you know, pull down the photo into paint. Very simple. Find a color that's so slightly different. Put the, you know, use numbers or whatever you want to put and you can plug them in there and, yeah, you can eventually see them if you pull it, but a lot of people just don't think about that. And so you'd be surprised how many people yeah. just ignore that. Right. And they just, or they look at it real fast and like, I don't see anything, but did you like, ex did you like blow it up a little bit? Like, Oh wow. There's something there. It's like, yeah. So you could do it different ways. You know, uh, there was one I couldn't find, but I, I'm sure people have some in their area or in their state where it's an audio file. We were talking about this before the show that you layer audio on top of itself. So, or you use, uh, use some stereo work. You can make it where the, the information comes out of one speaker and not the other, or there's ways to do it. There's little tricks, a lot of tools out there in the world where you could, uh, give people information hidden within uh, a music file or a song or so. Yeah. Be creative. Uh, do something different. Don't just go hide under a lamppost and call it a day, you know, give it some, <laughs> give it some thought. All right. Well, we will see y'all next Tuesday. Hey, Pop the pop the uh, no, email perfect. address back up there a minute. I might yes. we might as well just get this out of the way. Yes, sir. So okay. for a future show idea, send in to this email address your favorite puzzle, and tell us oh, yeah. why it's We're your favorite puzzle. Yep. Just just don't need a book report. You know, don't need don't need a hundred pages of why it's your favorite. Just a a couple of lines, but send us your favorite puzzle. Yeah, and we're going to compile them, and the Puzzle Boys are going to go over the – they're going to do a future show with the fan favorites. So definitely send us your favorite your favorite one. This kind of fan? No, not that kind of fan. Oh. Sorry. Not my, not my face <laughs> for radio stuff? Your face for radio. <laughs> Love it. Love it. it. All right, guys. Um, hey, thanks to everybody for tuning in. We appreciate you guys. And uh, till next week, we'll see you later. See ya. We'll see you. Bye.